Okay. I did this video weeks ago titled Everything Wrong with the Captain Marvel movie. And hold up, let me backtrack. So I've said time and time again that I break up comic book fans of characters in different tiers. One tier is the one that I'm in. The uber nerds. The guys that actually read the comics, know of the characters. Have the short and long boxes galore. The nerds. And then you have that other tier, which I believe most people fall in. Are people that don't read comics at all. Or they've only read a few. And what they pick up from the characters, and they do enjoy it, the characters. They pick it up from cartoons, um, films, pop culture, merchandise, and a lot of the questions that they may have about comic book characters, they may look it up themselves, um, and they may ask people that know of the source material, but they aren't actual like readers of the comics. And there's nothing wrong with being in that tier. Nothing wrong. I am not a comic book protector elitist in the sense that I think that everybody that's a fan should be a super fan. That is not me. But then you have that other tier of people that are normies, but they're too arrogant to admit it. And these guys often try to make these characters based off their own like uh, like social agenda and what have you. And everything they know about the character is something they Googled real fast, Wikipedia. And they became an expert overnight. And they're very arrogant about this. This, that tier that I just mentioned, that third tier, is what this guy represents. Now, in my other like political and social commentary based videos, I've said that every individual, including myself, is ignorant on something. Every single one. Because not everybody knows everything about everything. There's subject matters. Hell, there's even comic book characters that I don't know a lot about. Me personally, I admit my ignorance and you should as an individual admit your ignorance because admitting your ignorance, acknowledging your ignorance is the only way that you gain knowledge. You have an incentive to seek knowledge. Doesn't matter if it's about comic book characters. It doesn't matter if it's about sports, science, it doesn't matter what it is. Admitting your ignorance is how you gain knowledge. But ignorance crosses over into stupidity when you have something that you're knowingly not knowledgeable on, yet you have a loud, obnoxious opinion on it. I'm not one of those guys that feels like they have to speak on every single thing, even when it comes to comic book characters. If you've seen my streams, we've sort of talked about this, and I've mentioned how there are comic book characters that I don't know about. You know, if you ask some people, ask me about even certain books and certain characters, and I'll straight up tell you, I don't know. Even within the realm, the stuff that I read, I read a lot of this material, man. I'm not a rookie to this. I'm a young guy, but I'm not a rookie to this. I've soaked so much information in. But if I don't know it, I will straight up tell you. I'm not sure. Maybe I'll look into it, but I don't know. That's Or, you know, definitely if it's a character that I'm not interested in, I'll just straight up tell you that's not something that I'm personally interested in. I'm not the guy that you should be asking. But this guy right here is representative of a lot of encounters that I don't not only have on YouTube, but on other forms of social media certainly happened with a lot of this Captain Marvel stuff. And this is why I said, if you want to try to fix this industry, start calling these people out on their bluff. Just start calling their bluff. Excuse me. This guy. Now, remember, this is my video where I talked about everything wrong with Captain Marvel. And some of the things that I spoke about was how. Carol Danvers is not an original character. She's just a tokenized version of Marvel. She's literally a female carbon copy of Marvel. She's the seventh person to inherit the name Captain Marvel, but she's just a tokenized version of Marvel, especially now, 
certainly when she first um, you know came about. That's why she wrote rocked a little star on her chest, red and blue suit. Even the suit that she rocks right now is just a copy of what Marvel wore back in the Gap. Power base is the same, yada yada. Hell, it was Marvel that brought her in, introduced everybody to Carol Danvers initially when her first appearance, and then she went like ten or so years um, before she even got her powers and became Miss Marvel. Now, one of the things that I mentioned, and I'm guessing what this guy is referring to. Now, let's read his comment right here. None of the movies are true to the comics and liberties have been taken. Now, get over it, he says. Let me address that first part real quick. I have never, and I don't know any comic book fan that has ever stated that a movie should be exactly like the comic. Though there are a lot of comics that movies, like if you looked at the Flashpoint movie, for example, it's literally right out of the Flashpoint the Flash One movie I'm referring to DC Comics, it's literally right out the comics. It's the same thing. So it does happen. But I, I don't think anybody, I don't know anybody that's asking for it to be exactly like it. We just wanted the legacy to be respected because, granted, this is where these characters come from. Marvel Cinematic Universe is not this big what if. You know, remember, you know, Marvel has their what if like comic line series. This is not, Marvel Cinematic Universe is just a depiction of story is telling stories that have already been told with their slight changes in in the characters most of and even the even within the comics the different universes are always like they're based off the main universe not, not always but the vast majority of them some of them are like future timelines stuff like that different earths and even them they those characters are always based off the guys in the prime main universe so but that's a straw man so right out the gate he's straw man but here here we got do your research better before slamming the movie this is what i was talking about when i say it, ignorance crosses over into su stupidity the cap marvels all had the same power male or female versions this is objectively a lie objectively a lie if you look at Matter of fact, hold on, just I know I'm recording this, but hold on just a second because I wasn't planning on doing this. Hold on. I have, and we've I've covered this on this channel, if I'm not mistaken. The official, the first, this is the amazing Spider-Man. Let me put it to me real quick. This is the official issue, or first the first time she ever showed up, Monica Rambo. I'm just using her as an example. This is 1982. Marvel has already died of cancer. She's introduced. She's the second Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel, like I said in this damn video, this one has nothing to do with Marvel. The public gave her the name. This had, she has nothing, her, how she got her powers, when she went to that little oil rig and, you know, whatever device homie was working on, it blew up and then it gave her her powers. This chick, this second version of Captain Marvel has nothing to do with Miss Marvel, has nothing to do with Marvel. Their power bases are completely different. In fact, if you go read the, the first Avengers deal that she shows up on because the thing the thing and if i'm not mistaken it's it, it's in here it's in the amazing spider-man when the thing told her about captain marvel and then in the first avengers book that she shows up in she talks about um to, to what well, she's talking to jarvis jarvis is the butler at the avengers mansion and she's like yeah um thing was telling me about there was another Captain Marvel. And then she showed he showed this video of, of Marvel. And so she didn't know who she was. She's already have her, she has a suit, she has her power, she's in the damn event, Avengers match, about to become an Avenger. She has no idea who these people are. There was no connection. So that's right out the gate. Saying they all had the same power is objectively false. Which is the point I was making in the video. But this is the part 
that's interesting that we're going to dive into just a little bit deeper. In that video, I said that if Marvel was so desperate and they didn't want to utilize the like Gamora or Nebula or Black Widow, Black Widow would have been the obvious choice. But if they didn't want to get behind them as powerful female characters because they don't really have powers, they should have got behind Scarlet Witch. And that would have not only made sense for the sake of their universe because the characters there but she has some historical context, some historical connection to that the the arc this is based on, the Infinity Gauntlet arc. And by the way, going back to the point that I mentioned earlier about how Marvel Cinematic Universe, all their main arcs come directly from the comics. Age of Ultron, Civil War, now we're in the Infinity Gauntlet arc. This is right, right out of the source material with slight changes. But anyway... If they didn't want to get behind those three that I mentioned, they should have just got behind Scarlet Witch. She has the historical connection in the sense that she was actually present during the Infinity Gauntlet arc. But he says Scarlet Witch did dust out during the th snap of Thanos. You are way too full of crap. This is 19, you know, this is when it came out. This is the original Infinity Gauntlet arc. This is the third issue. And we're going to dive into this here. In a, who the hell is this right on the cover? These are the heroes that still exist, right? So most of these are still in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, we got Thor, but this is Eric Masterson. But you do have Drax the Destroyer, um, Captain America, Spider-Man, Hulk, Iron Man. These are characters that were at least present during the Infinity Gauntlet arc. Now, there are people that I thought they... Doctor Strange as well. He's that very important to this. Now, I did thought they should have brought in Silver Surfer and so forth, but with the Fox deal, that's another whole other story. We'll get to that in another video. But this person right here in this corner, who do they think this is? She's on the... Co but we'll we'll go back. We'll, we'll dive into it here. This is the actual comic. Issue three, the the cat you know chaos. This is Black Widow, uh, by the way, uh, but chaos is among us, bros. Things are getting crazy. He snapped. Half of the universe is gone. Destruction, yada yada. These people are looking for help because they're like a lot of the heroes aren't there. So they're looking for help because a lot of the heroes are not there. So there, here we are. It's like, this is Dr. Strange. I call upon you to aid in this struggle. This poor, tortured world suffers. Your skills and powers are gravely needed. This is Dr. Strange saying, hey man, if you're still around, if you haven't disappeared, I need you here. Iron Man pops up. Spider-Man pops up. Wolverine. Drax the Destroyer. Fire Lord. Nova. The Submariner, if you will. Cloak. Because Dagger was one of the ones that disappeared. Cyclops. And then there's this person right here. See if I can zoom in. I can the mutant scarlet witch there she is right here what in the living what is he what is this guy talking about now this is the whole deal with hulk and but it hulk does eventually come so we have all these heroes standing around they're about to basically go fight thanos scarlet witch is right there And the reason why I said this made a lot more sense is because, um, you know, Carol Danvers wasn't present during any of this. So let me go to myself real quick, because I do want to look for something while I'm kind of chatting with you guys. But notice how arrogant that comment was. But I have this sort of conversation. Well, we can't really call it a conversation, but I see these pop pop offs. And I don't know what's so offensive to the normie that acts like that to just say, 
I don't really know what happened. I'm just wanting to be entertained. There's nothing wrong with that, bro. There's nothing to say, look, I, I actually enjoy the movies. I enjoy some of the cartoons. I know about some of these characters. I don't read the comics. I, I don't want to sit there and read flipping pages and stuff like that. I don't do it. There's nothing offensive about that. Or just even if you do read the comics, there's nothing offensive to say, you know what, man? I don't know. Have the integrity to at least admit your own ignorance. But that's not what this guy no. did. And I'm not, I'm using this guy as an example. It's not to just dive in on him, though. That's exactly what we're doing. But I had to use this guy as an example. And just, uh, by the way, this is what I was looking for. I wanted to go in the next issue real quick. And uh, let me show you guys something. This is issue number four of the Infinity Gauntlet. Just so there's no confusion and some idiots like, oh, well, maybe he wasn't there during the, he was talking about the actual fight. By now, the heroes have all dropped in on Thanos. They were transported via um, Doctor Strange. It's Doctor Strange set this. He basically put a spell on everybody so they could breathe in space. Right out the gate, because Mephi Mephisto's there is obviously Lady Death, all of this. This is um, Taraxia and so forth. But there she is right there. So to say that she wasn't present is an objective lie. It's simply not true. But if we go back to this guy's comment, he says Scarlet Witch did dust out during the snap of Thanos. Didn't. She was one of the ones that was still left. That was the whole reason why I said she, it made more sense to get behind her. It made the most sense. That was the most obvious solo film. To me, that was the most obvious sol solo film. And if you wanted to get behind a character that was powerful, because they really nerfed her if you want to be tr true. All I'm saying, people, is that don't feel, and there's, there's a story here, man. That you can learn. Everybody can learn from this, man. No matter what it is you're into, whether you're into comics or not. Don't be so ashamed of your ignorance, man. Learn from it. But most importantly, and this is what I think social media really screwed up. A lot of positives that have come with social media. We've been connected and been able to connect with people that otherwise we would have never known existed. And that's a beautiful thing. So it, it brought the world a lot closer, connected them. People feel like they're not alone in some of the subcultures that they're involved in. Because maybe from a local standpoint, they don't know. Social media has connected us like that. However... What it has also done is we would treat with the ideas of trending topics. Everybody feels like they have to talk about everything. They have to have an opinion on everything. It has to be loud. I'm not that guy. And I would suggest that you don't be that guy because you end up making an ass out of yourself like Jer Radcliffe. And it's not to just pile up on the guy, though we're, we're sort of doing that. I believe that he's representative of a lot of individuals, not just in the sort of these conversations that we have within comic books, but also just life in general and, and topics and social media and internet conversations and stuff like that. People go out on a limb, speak out of ignorance and make asses of themselves all because they feel like they have to. And again, this is goes to the social slant because people feel like I got to protect my social agenda. You know, I got, I got to protect it. I, there's a slant here. I got to, I got to take it. Therefore I got to, even if I'm not that knowledgeable and that's, I believe that's what happened with Captain Marvel. Say what you will. But even if you're not that knowledgeable on something, because you think that it fits the social agenda that you'd like to promote, you so aggressively have to defend it. I don't know why people feel like they have to do that. I don't feel like I got to do that. I, don't, I mean, Unless it's with myself. Maybe it's something I'm passionate about that I will defend it. But I'm at least going to go into the fight equipped with knowledge. Not like this guy. 
So the two things to take from this, for one, you know, I did that video. If you like, you want to fix the industry, start calling the bluffs of these people. Um, it sort of goes into that. But the main thing to take from this is that it, it really highlights how people feel like they have to have this aggressive opinion on everything. And then they have to crap on you and uh, try to shit on you in the process by being disrespectful just because they didn't like that you had said some. Sometimes, you know, the facts are the facts. It is what it is. Like, I'm, I didn't make anything up about Scarlet Witch being there. But because it made more sense, he's offended. I don't know why you'd be offended by something like that, but he's offended. But you don't have to have a loud opinion on everything, bro. It's okay to say you don't know. It's okay to be like, I'm going to sit this one out. Y'all know I stay in my lane. Definitely if you follow me on Twitter, you know, I'm a, you know I stay in my lane. I don't speak on things that I don't want, I don't either understand. I certainly don't, don't go out of my way to speak on things that I'm like not interested in. You know what I mean? Like, I'm interested in comics, so I talk a lot about comics. Interested in certain sports, talk a lot about sports. I'm a libertarian and an activist in that aspect, so I speak a lot on that. But even within those subject matters and subcultures that I mentioned, there may be things that I don't understand. I don't know. I will be the first to be like, homie, I don't know. And if there's a trending topic where people are talking about it and I, and I ain't knowledgeable on that, I'm like, I'm sending it out. So if I want to know about it so I can participate in the conversation, I will, you know, actually look through it, equip myself with the knowledge before I even open my mouth to fix it. I'll vet it and before I even open my mouth to fix it. It's not to say that I'm perfect. It's not to say that there might even be something that I will say that is wrong. But I'm not going to make an ass out of myself. So don't feel like you got to speak on everything. It's okay to just be like, you know what? I'm going to let y'all do y'all thing. That's going to wrap it up for this video. It's lasted a lot longer, but I think, I think we all got something from it, man. But yeah, man, until next time, y'all boys be easy.